Hey, this is Frank Taylor in the, during the first week of April, uh, broadcasting to you uh, nature in your backyard. And uh, I couldn't let another week go by or another day go by without doing the state tree of Virginia. And I always make a joke about this tree that you can identify this tree by its bark because its name is the dogwood. And right now, dogwoods are flowering. And it's a really easy to identify tree with these large white flowers with showy petals. They're uh, pretty good size flowers. And uh, uh, you can see them spread out through the woods. This is a small tree. They call it an understory tree. And you can see it flowering uh, here in the background on the side of the road where I stopped to show pictures of it. The other characteristic uh, of the leaf that helps you identify it is they have parallel veins and if you can see that you can see the veins in this leaf are very very parallel to each other and it's a characteristic of our dogwoods. Dogwoods used to be more plentiful they used to be flowering everywhere but uh, they're kind of having their own little pandemic too. There's a dogwood anthracnose that has uh, affected our, our native dogwoods. A lot of people are still planting dogwoods in their yards and their uh, hybrid or uh, imported varieties that give you the same flower, uh, but not our native species. So shout out to State Tree of Virginia, our dogwoods. So now I'm here back in my backyard and I wanted to uh, share some more things about dogwood trees. And again, um, I always say, you know, like learning the name of something or how to identify something is just the beginning. If you do some research, you get that name and it empowers you to do some research on the plant. And you can find out some really cool things. Like one of the things is how did dogwood get its name? Well, there's two theories. One is, you know, dogwoods produce these really bright red berries in the fall. And they are edible, but they don't really taste great. So that they say that the colonial people in America called the dogwood the dogwood tree because the berries weren't fit for a dog. Another theory on the name goes back to England, where the tree was introduced in like, I think, 1531, um, I read some things about that, and Chaucer talked about this tree in some of his, his writings. But um, it was called uh, Dagwood, which is a derivative of you know what dogwood became. Dagwood meant that it was a, a hardwood, and it, you could use it for sharp objects like a dagger. So they called it Dagwood, and then, then that later became dogwood. So that's just one thing. In America, this tree has been popular for a long, long time. Lots of people are planting this tree in their yards because of the beautiful foliage uh, during the summertime, the flowers in the uh, spring, and the red berries um, in, the, in the fall and the wintertime. Um, uh, George Washington planted it at Mount Vernon. Thomas Jefferson planted it at Monticello. Now, the tree has been used for, for centuries for medicinal purposes. The bark is rich in tannins, and uh, tannins were used to produce uh, several different kinds of, of medicines. Um, and one of them is as a pain reliever. Um, during the, the Civil War, um, it was where, uh, especially in the South, where resources were very limited, the bark was used to make a, a tea that was used as a quinine substitute. And quinine was used to treat malaria. Quinine is also uh, related to the uh, substance, the, uh, the chloroquine substance that uh, we think might be useful in uh, treating coronavirus right now. So there's some interesting links there. Another thing, and I'm, you can see me, I'm checking my notes. Another thing the dogwood was used for um, in colonial times was for brushing your teeth. You'd take the twigs, peel off the bark, and rub and scrub your teeth uh, with, the, uh, with the twigs from that. Um, the wood <clears throat> is a very, very hard wood. It's very resistant to pests and stuff. And it had a lot of different 
uh, uses as, as uh, uh, for in a whole lot of different products. Apparently, I just really didn't know this. The wood was used in golf clubs and uh, for the, for the heads because it's very very hard. Um, it was used in uh, handles of chisel chisels. It was used in uh, for wedges because this wood apparently has a very very high shock resistance. You can hit it and hit it and hit it over and over again, and it won't split. So it was very useful for things where uh, you needed a very hard wood that wouldn't split. Find out that tennis rackets, some of the first laminated tennis rackets were made from the strips of wood cut and glued together uh, for this. So the wood was also used in mallets and pulleys um, and apparently it's really, really good for turning in a lathe. So the amazing thing is, you know, you can all these plants and trees and, and things that I that I find, you look up the history of these things, they all have a history, they all have a natural history, they all had special uses that, that people at the time knew about. Now that we've advanced with plastics and steel and metal and different alloys and stuff, we don't look to the particular qualities of a plant or or trees or wood to serve certain purposes for us and so we're kind of out of touch with that so another cool plant dogwood tree interesting to find out about how it was named what it was used for in the past the qualities of wood thank you for tuning in and we'll see what we find in our backyard tomorrow